I don't like to focus on the dark side of humanity nor mysterious internet cults, but like many others, I recently discovered something that left me deeply disturbed. I spent many nights researching this topic, scraping and hoarding any single piece of information I could find. It just seemed like every time I got a little bit closer to mildly figuring it out, it would just somehow get more and more bizarre. I forgot to introduce myself. My name's Alec and I'm a professional filmmaker, video producer, and not at all professional musician. I like making documentary comedy videos, lighthearted stuff with a silly tone, but this is different. And if you subscribe to me in hopes of me continuing that tone, at least for this video, I'm sorry. This will definitely be a departure. It wouldn't even take an educated guess to assume YouTube is stockpiled full of monkey videos. Compilations, clickbait, interspecies monkey fights, funny monkeys, mean monkeys, and of course. Oh, shit. <laughs> but when you enter the underbelly of YouTube's monkey obsession, an educated guess may be the only way to begin explaining it. A few weeks ago, I came across a 4chan paranormal thread detailing the findings of a bizarre internet cult communicating almost exclusively on the YouTube platform. A plethora of comments with desires of abuse, torture, and killing directed mostly towards pre-adolescent monkeys. But this is the internet. We live in an era of desensitized trolling, the world, I think we're getting swatted. angry reactions, and rage-worthy fetishes. When compared to popular content of troll posts, these comments can look rather tame in comparison. And even if we don't look at them as troll posts, it's still not the most shocking, relatively speaking, for YouTube comments. But the thing is, here, the devil is in the details. an incomprehensible number of comments, countless fantasies and countless dedicated fans, loving at the very least monkeys being sad and at the most killed or tortured. And the entire spectrum of their material is hidden in plain sight on YouTube, being consumed at an incredibly massive and alarming rate. Rather expectedly, monkey hate actually did make its debut onto the World Wide Web as an act of trolling. Allegedly, in late 1996, then SLU student Paul Hughes created the website ifihadamonkey.com as a way of pissing off PETA members. Sporting a dark, violent sense of humor, Paul writes what would eventually become the equivalent to dead baby jokes. The format was a fill-in-the-blank one. If I had a monkey, dot, 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 and so on. Paul would have been likely caught off guard when viewer mail flowed in, requesting their own violent additions would be added. Soon the site would expand, with sprawling pages of viewer submissions detailing the violent desires of what they would indeed do if they had a monkey. Needless to say, it's safe to assume a percentage of these are humor, but statistically speaking, the scale of these submissions could suggest otherwise. As far as Paul was concerned, he succeeded in his goal of bringing anger to animal activists, but unknowingly created the internet's first platform for connecting anonymous users with the common interest of monkey hate. Like any movie, documentary, pornographic or otherwise, to understand why or how it exists at all is to identify the supplier. When creating a film to make production as productive as possible, it's important to pick the right location. Angkor Wat, Cambodia is home to sprawling historical temples inhabited by a band of over 60 macaques. Infamous for their naughty, sometimes seemingly criminal behavior, they quickly became one of the most famous and well-known localized groups of animals on the earth. While many tourists find these thieving monkeys humorous, or perhaps mildly frustrating or scary, others would have an uncontrollable, obsessive urge to torture and kill them. And so a decision would be made. 
This is the location suppliers would soon choose. In or around 2015, anonymous Cambodia-based videographers began following around the Angkor Wat macaques, getting close and capturing their every move almost like a reality TV show. It started off innocent, almost as a wildlife documentary, but soon would adapt to viewer engagement. YouTube users had a desire for monkey harm, sadness, and pain, and would verbally praise the videos which met their desires and ignore the rest. These videos would soon be almost entirely focused on some form of monkey sadness. Now, I know what you may be thinking, we've seen worse on BBC's Planet Earth. However, the editing style here is where it gets tricky. I'm gonna play out this clip, mourning, it's disturbing, I'm sorry. But I want you to make up your mind if it's edited more like a nature documentary or like a pornographic film. Okay, you may have noticed something really odd with the audio there, and I'm not talking the slow motion sounds, which is awful. I I'm talking about this. This audio does not match anywhere else in the clip, and I think it only means one thing. I think the videographer went up to the dying monkey off camera and recorded its last breaths. So this is where things get weird. Around this time, creators started appearing and popping up at the same rate as the viewers, churning out videos at an incredibly productive rate of at least one video per day. The first group of creators we'll call the voyeurs, which we'll get back to later. The second group we'll call homemade. These individuals have a pet monkey, assumably purchased, adopted, or stolen, and cater to the requests of the commenters akin to a live stream. The third group we'll call found. There's a lot of content found footage style video, mostly from news agencies displaying seized animal cruelty evidence, which attracts the same crowd of pleasure. 4chan wasn't the first to spot this strange internet anomaly. Something awful? The bodybuilding forums and various other online communities spoke about it already, but it would almost always die off after a few pages and fade into internet obscurity, going relatively unnoticed. However, in 2019, when 4chan's paranormal board picked it up, it would create what would surely become the most productive and detailed investigation into monkey hate content we've seen yet. A large amount of the commenters have very similar profiles, American names, and very fluent English. And many have profile photos which display a selfie not found via reverse image search. This raises quite a few interesting questions. Are they bots with e whoring photos? Are they the same person? Or are they real, unique individuals who feel a bit too comfortable about publicly sharing their monkey hate on the surface web, exposed and accessible even to their family, employers, and significant others? Some users speculate that these monkey hate fans are using monkeys as a proxy for sadist pedophilia fantasy, engaging in a totally legal behavior that gets the job done for them. We've certainly seen comments like this before on YouTube, which were without a doubt linked to pedophilia. 
I personally found this theory only mildly interesting until I combed through the plethora of channels dedicated to monkeys, and I noticed some things that were equally disturbing as they were interesting. First, most of these channels were linked and shared an audience with what's assumably Cambodian produced videos of children pretend hunting and eating with very off-putting and almost forced fetish undertones. Second, is that one of the largest content creators has an interesting acronym in their channel name. Third, and possibly most disturbing, is that some of the monkey channels have recently started shifting their content to also assumably Cambodian produced simulated preteen and teenager rape video. Also, lastly, probably unrelated but just plain odd, was YouTube's front end breaking regularly only on channels containing the monkey content. I have never seen this before. Some other users speculate that these videos are a form of steganography. Steganography in a modern technological sense is the process of hiding perfectly readable data inside an image or video file. For years, we've known that you can hide storage volumes such as the mountable disk of a flash drive inside a playable and uploadable MP4 video file. As the theory goes, these monkey hate videos are actually containers for much more nefarious material lying encrypted and hidden inside. A very vocal group of users speculate that this is a big elaborate form of trolling, which is certainly plausible, of course, but would render this one of the largest, most elaborate, and dedicated trolling campaigns we've ever seen to date. The most logical to me is that these are a bunch of people who fetishize and obsess over torturing and killing monkeys, especially baby ones. Okay, you knew it was coming. Here is where I go on the expected rant about YouTube and asking why they're providing a safe place for these people to share common interests or perhaps why these videos are allowed past their terms and conditions in the first place, but there's no need to rehash that. We all know it. I guess at the end, I'm just one guy who isn't nearly as smart nor investigative as some of you. And as much as I want to provide you with a conclusion or closure at this point, I just can't. And it's just as frustrating for me as it surely is for you. If I got anything wrong or you found something new, please leave a comment below. I think it's time we have a dialogue about this. And most importantly, if there is something bigger hidden here, it would be great to figure out what it is and how to get to the bottom of it. And then maybe I can go back to making the lighthearted comedy videos I really enjoy making.